Okay, let's see if this works this time. Um, I don't know how to test it. Uh, if you are seeing this and hearing it, uh, honk your horn. Or somebody wave at me. I see some people are watching, so maybe it's working. We had a little problem uh, getting started from the laptop, so I switched to my phone, so it's a little bit different effect. Hope you can hear. Uh, plan to play some songs, but uh, that won't work with using the phone. But again, if you're if you're in the park and praise in the lot and you're seeing this, hearing this, give me some indication. Blow a horn or something. Okay, I see somebody waving at me. Maybe that means good things. Okay. All right, so an interesting day. Uh, and... Uh, interesting times. Why don't we pray together and we'll get started. Holy God, thank you for your love and for granting us this day, a beautiful day which belongs to you and you've shared it with us. Please uh, help us to focus on you for a few minutes as we look at your word. Thank you for your love in Jesus and all your promises to us and help us to love one another. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we're going to get started with the message. Um, there was a, uh, a surgeon, an engineer, and a politician that were debating which of their professions was the oldest and the surgeon said, Eve was made from Adam's rib. And that, of course, was a surgical procedure. Obviously, surgery is the oldest profession. Well, the engineer countered with this. He said, yes, but before that, order was created out of chaos. And that most certainly was an engineering job. Well, the old politician just smiled and and said sort of triumphantly, aha, and just who do you think created the chaos? Well, how would you define chaos? Your child's bedroom? Your husband's workspace? Your wife's, well, I better not fill in the blank there. That might create some chaos for me. But in the dictionary, at least the one that I looked at, uh, chaos is defined as, well, a couple ways. Number one, utter confusion or disorder. Number two, the formless matter supposed to have preceded the existence of the ordered universe. Definitions of chaos. Now, let's do a little bit of theology today. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. Now, some translations say the earth was waste and void. Some say formless and empty. Uh, this is the concept of chaos originally. So, you know, if we go on in Genesis 1, in the account of creation, it says, and God said, let there be light. So God begins to take that formlessness, that empty void, that chaos, if you will, and he begins to bring order to it. He creates order. He puts things in order. 
Our God is a God of order. He fights against chaos all the time. He wants to set things straight. He wants to make things right. That's the nature of the God we worship. If you think about it, even in in worship, God desires order, doesn't he? Um, The Bible expresses God's desire that in worship all things should be done decently and in order. You've heard that before, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 40. Now that's a verse that some have abused down through the years. They have equated God's order with their personal preference or with the way things always have been done. So we have to be careful in applying that verse, but the principle remains that God is a God of order. Well, I'm sure we've all had chaotic times, a chaotic week, maybe a chaotic day. We might even describe the last few weeks as out of order. Um, I don't know if you'd call it chaos, but it's certainly not the norm what we've experienced, but there might be all kinds of examples we would cite uh, of of chaos. We experience it in different degrees, even sickness and disease from a biblical perspective really is, is chaotic. God's created order, what he began with, didn't have sickness and disease didn't have death. That all comes after the fall, after man sinned. And remember when Jesus came into the world, one of the things he did was he did all he could to heal and to cast out demons and things like that, putting things in order. It's part of the reason Jesus did the things he did. So the picture I'm trying to to paint for us is that the world we live in now is often chaotic. Uh, Bad things happen, and sometimes to good people. And people, as we all know, speak, uh, they, they commit unspeakable things atrocities, and, and there's suffering, and there's disaster, and there's disorder. In short, we might call it chaos. And I'm not telling you anything you don't know. Well, we ask, why has this happened? I want us to turn for an answer to one of the great prophets. We're really going to look at verses from two prophets. But to begin with, Jeremiah. Jeremiah quotes from the opening chapter of the Bible. He quotes... Uh, a verse we already quoted, Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. He does so in the fourth chapter of Jeremiah, and verse 23. I want you to hear what he says. I think it's very powerful language that he uses. Jeremiah 4, verse 23, he says, I looked on the earth, and behold, it was without form and void. There's our quote from Genesis 1. I looked on the earth, behold, it was without form and void, and to the heavens, and they had no light. I looked on the mountains, and behold, they were quaking, and all the hills moved to and fro. I looked, and behold, there was no man, and all the birds of the air had fled. I looked, and behold, the fruitful land was a desert, and all its cities were laid in ruins before the Lord, before his fierce anger. But what the prophet is really describing there is chaos. In in powerful, poetic language, he describes a world that's reverting back to chaos. It's sort of creation being undone. He says there's no cities, there's no good land, uh, there are no birds, there are no human beings, no mountains, no light, no heavens, and no earth. It's sort of Genesis chapter 1 reversed, creation undone. It's the return of chaos. Why has this happened in Jeremiah's case? Well, if you look right before the passage we read, 
We started in verse 23 of Jeremiah 4. If you look at verse 22, it says this, For my people are foolish. They know me not. They are stupid children. They have no understanding. They are wise in doing evil. But how to do good, they know not. So in this account, this situation, what causes the return to chaos? Jeremiah, God through Jeremiah says sin and foolishness and not knowing God and, and a lack of understanding, the practice of evil. That's what caused it in Jeremiah's situation, his day. And those kinds of things still do it today. Very co same kinds of things can create chaos in our experience, in our world. Don't misinterpret or misapply this to say when a certain bad thing happens, for instance, a pandemic, that it's God's specific response to evil. No. But the fact that we have things like this in our world is a sign that we live in a fallen world. Now, God's not happy with any of this, of course. He, he always confronts chaos. He always battles against it. He works to stamp it out. And we could really do a lengthy study of this in Scripture, different ways God confronts chaos. Well, one of the other great prophets of God wrote down what I think is one of the most beautiful passages of Scripture that, that we can find. It's Isaiah. And I want you to look with, with me at Isaiah chapter 65. Because in this chapter, Isaiah 65, God tells us what he intends to do to confront chaos in our world. He, he tells us some plans that he has. And I think they ought to be comforting. They ought to fill us with hope and faith and a true zeal to share it with others. Uh, this is a passage that, that I have read many times. I read it, of course, preparing this week in light of our situation, in light of the news, uh, in light of various problems I know some people are dealing with. There's more going on than just this, this uh, virus that's out there. People have problems in their lives. They have chaos in their lives. Uh, I read it in light of my own life, my own uh, struggles. I want you to listen to what God says through Isaiah today, but listen to it as God's word to you in your life, in your setting this week, whatever that might be, in addition to quarantine, in light of everything that's going on. Apply these words. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 17. God says, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. And the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy and her people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in the sound of it weeping and the cry of distress. No more shall, the, be, shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days or an old man who does not fill out his days. For the young man shall die a hundred years old and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be. And my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, or, or bear children for calamity. For they shall be the offspring of the blessed of the Lord and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. 
While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall graze together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. I hope that passage speaks to you with some power today and this week. It sure did to me. A reminder that our God is a God of order. He wants to set things straight in a world that's crooked. He offers us a time and a place when he will create again a perfect place, a place without chaos, called here a new heavens and a new earth. Peter says uh, in his second letter in the New Testament, uh, 2 Peter 3, 11 and following, he says that we as Christians are waiting for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness dwells. I I believe that the Bible teaches us that the Lord is coming back and he is bringing heaven with him. And he's going to recreate a new dwelling place. And folks, we're all invited. You know, we get a little taste of it now in Christ's kingdom, in the church And and we get to be a part of confronting chaos. Every time we do good and we practice righteousness, we get to follow in God's steps and and confront chaos. We referred earlier when we were defining the term chaos, um, you know, it's sort of when bad things happen to good people. I thought... We could take that phrase, that familiar phrase, and sort of twist it around. What about when good people happen to bad things? When good people happen to bad things. That's confronting chaos. Every time we obey God, every time we love one another, we love people, We bless people. We treat each other right. We are chipping away at chaos in the here and now. And that's what we ought to be about. In whatever way we can, whatever opportunities God gives us to confront chaos, we're never more like him than when we do that. But there is coming a day when God does away with chaos forever. This is not the um, what our existence will be like for eternity. Uh, there, there's a day coming when chaos is put away. And we should be waiting for that day with eager anticipation. Let's all be able to pray like those early Christians. It seems like one of the things they said in prayer was, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Why would we say that? Because we know there's something better coming. Let's think about our God today, the fact that he sent his son into the world to confront the chaos of our world, to confront sin, to to offer a a medicine for sin, a, a healing for sin. And think about how we're called in God's kingdom to confront chaos on a daily basis. Several ways, even during this time of isolation, that as a church we've been able to do that. You're blessing people in your community You're confronting chaos, and let's just continue that faithfully as we have opportunity. 
Let's pray again. Father, thank you for your love, for your guidance in your word, the encouragement. Thank you that uh, we've been able to see one another, see one another today uh, for a few minutes and that we've been able to share in your word, share in communion. And let's go out now, we ask to, to bless others. Thank you for our Savior who died for us. And may we be faithful to him this week. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.